Okay, to round out our study of the first unit, uh, we're going to be looking at limits, or rather re-looking at limits, because limits is a topic that you uh, understood quite a bit in single variable calculus. So uh, let's, let's see, before we, we get into two or multivariable calculus, let's think about um, the idea of limits, which said that, you know, if we had some function and let's suppose maybe our function had a hole at some point, the idea of limits is that the limit talks about as x approaches some value. So from either side, it's approaching some value, and we'll call that c, that my y is approaching some value over here. And we'll call that l. So the idea being, uh, you know, using limits, as x approaches c, my function approaches L. And in order for a limit to exist in single variable calculus, uh, it must approach a value from the left side, it must approach a value from the right side, and the value that it's approaching from either side must be the same. Similarly, in, in two dimensions, uh, we say that the function has a limit at the point a, b. So now we've got uh, you know, a, f a function f of x, y that's in terms of two variables. And we say that it has a limit l. So l is what my function is approaching as x approaches a and y approaches b. And the limit exists if our function f of x, y gets really, really close to L whenever x, y gets really, really close to the point A, B. So in other words, as x gets close to A and y gets close to B, our function must get close to one point. And uh, the definition of continuity, and this is the same parallel from single variable calculus, a function is continuous at the point if well, first of all, if the function exists, so first the function needs to exist, and then the function must equal the limit. So we're going to look at this, uh, some examples of this. So continuity, uh, continuity, the calculus definition, like I just said, um, f of x, y exists, the limit as x, y approaches a, b of f of x. Well, now it's f of x, y. Exists. So the limit must exist. The function must exist. And to, to talk about continuity at a point, uh, just to be consistent, let's say f of a, b. So at the point, it's continuous. And then uh, lastly, the function must equal the limit. And this must be true for all points A, B. So there's the definition for continuity. All three must, must be met, and then the function is continuous. All right, so let's, let's look at how we do this in, in Two, with two variables. So the idea is uh, we fix the y variable and then let x approach a. And then we're going to fix the x variable and let y approach b. And then make sure that the limits 
equal each other. So for this example here, we want to show that the limit as x approaches, as x and y approach 0, 0, that our function approaches 0. So uh, if we call this 1 and 2 and 3, doing number 1, we're going to fix y. So we're going to let y just pretend it's a constant. And then we're going to let x approach a. So in my function, we're going to have zero squared y over zero squared plus y squared, which equals zero over y squared. And then we're going to look at the limit as y approaches zero, which is, or as the limit as y approaches zero, zero of 0 over y squared, and that equals 0. So here we let x approach 0 with a fixed y. We got this term, and then we let y approach 0. Now we're going to do uh, the reverse of that, where we're going to let fix x and let y approach b. So we have um, x squared 0 over x squared plus 0 squared. And we're going to look at the limit as x approaches 0. And this also equals 0. So whether we fix x or fix y, uh, in both cases, the limits are the same. Therefore, we say that the limit exists and the limit equals zero. Let's look at an example where the, the limit does not exist. So in this similar looking case, um, let's fix x. So we're fixing x here. So when we fix x, we're just going to let y go to 0. So we have x squared over x squared plus 0 squared. But we're going to let x approach 0. And when we let x approach 0 using L'Hopital's rule, uh, we get that this is going to equal 1. which is going to give us a different answer when we fix y. So when we fix y, we're going to get uh, the limit as y approaches 0 now of putting 0 in for x, 0 squared, 0 squared, plus y squared. So now we're letting y change. And what we get here is 0. And we notice that these two limits don't equal each other. Therefore, the limit does not exist. OK, here's a, a, an example of a problem you might see on your problem set. We've got some function here. And it says compute the limit x comma y as x and y. Sorry, compute the limit as x, y approaches 0, 0. Uh, as x, y approaches the origin along the positive x axis. So our idea being we want to see what our function approach is. What's the z value as we approach the point 0, 0 along the positive x-axis? So what that means to say along the positive x-axis is that we're going to let y be 0 and we're going from positive x toward the origin, toward that 0, 0. So we're letting x approach 0, setting y equal to 0. So um, that then becomes the limit as x approaches 0 of 
x minus, well, if we put 0 in here for y, we're going to get x minus 0 over x minus 0. And again, L'Hopital's rule will result in this limit equaling 1. OK, cool. And then uh, compute the limit as xy approaches 0, 0 of my function as x approaches the origin along the positive y-axis. Well, so now um, we're changing y and fixing x. So the idea being that we're going to approach the origin with a fixed x at 0. And why x is fixed at 0 uh, is because because of that. So we let x be 0, and, um, and what we get is the limit. So now y is getting close to 0 as y approaches 0 of negative 2y squared over 2y squared. And L'Hopital's rule will result in this equaling negative 1. Well, we get a different limit. Even though they're both 1, 1 is positive, 1 is negative. Therefore, does the limit exist? No. So is the, is the function continuous at 0, 0? Well, because the limit doesn't exist, our, our function, therefore, is not continuous. Um, well, the answer is given here, but let's talk about this problem. Uh, another sample problem. It says, determine whether there is a value for C making the following function continuous everywhere. Well, the idea being um, we've got some function here, C plus Y, for X less than or equal to 9. And then another, you know, when X is greater than 9, we have 10 minus X. And we want to see, is it continuous everywhere? Well, in order for it to be continuous everywhere, in order for it to be continuous everywhere at 9, the two functions must equal each other. And I think you'll remember having done this, these problems a lot in single variable calculus. So at x equals 9, we're going to make sure that uh, c plus y equals 10 minus 9. So I'm putting in 9 for x. And we get the equation c plus y equals 1. So c must equal 1 minus y. Well, So the question is, is there, is there a value for C that will make it, um, make it continuous everywhere? And the answer is, is no. And, and, and how do we interpret that? Uh, the idea is that the value of C that would make it continuous has a Y in it, which means that uh, our C is variable on Y. So there's not one value. We can't choose one value that would make it continuous because our value of C is, is a variable that depends on y. So there's no constant value that I could plug in for c here that would make these two functions continuous everywhere. All right, find the limits of the function as x and y approach 0, 0. So the answer is there, but let's, let's go through the, the process. Let's let x equal 0. So we're so we'll let y be changing. So we're looking at the limit as y approaches 0 of 2e to the negative 5x, but 5 is 0, minus 6y. And as we let y approach 0, we can just use direct substitution because there's no, um, no lack of continuity here. So we get 2e to the negative 5 times 0 minus 6 times 0, which is just e to the 0, uh, which makes this whole thing just equal to 1. 
So we get equals 1. And I think you could probably, oh sorry, equals not 1, equals 2, because it's 2 times 1. So similarly, if we let y equal 0, so now we have the limit as x approaches 0 of 2 to the negative 5x, or sorry, 2 times e to the negative 5x. minus 6 times 0, or minus 0. Uh, and then as we let x approach 0, again, just use direct substitution. Uh, so e to the minus 0 minus 0, which, once again, is 2. And so uh, when we fix x and let y approach 0, it equaled 2. When we fixed y and let x approach 0, it equals 2. They equal the same thing. Therefore, the limit of our function equals 2. And that's really it. Um, there will be some trickier, potentially trickier problems uh, on the problem set, but they will be trickier really just because uh, we, we can't go over every single type of problem. Uh, but I think there's enough information here to get you going. So there we go. That is limits and continuity of functions in more than one variable.